Alex Garland is one of those directors who tends to be very polarizing. I've seen some people say that they absolutely hated one of his films, and I've seen other people say that that same film is absolutely brilliant. I think for me personally, it's kind of a mixed bag when it comes to looking at the totality of his filmography. But one thing is for sure, and this is something that I could never take away from him as a director. His films, for better or for worse, are oftentimes thought-provoking. And Civil War is no exception to that. Let's discuss. I watch so you don't have to. Before I get started, I'd like to kindly ask that you hit the like button, and please subscribe to the channel for more content just like this. Come on. Do it. Do it! Civil War takes place in a dystopian future America, where a team of military-embedded journalists race against time to reach Washington, D.C. before rebel factions descend upon the White House. So prior to seeing this film, I was already seeing reactions to it that were setting up red flags everywhere. I've already admitted that Alex Garland's films tend to be controversial at times, but I saw one reaction in particular that took it to a whole nother level and made me feel like this was a film that I needed to see personally, simply because of the way that some people were taking issue with it. And this reaction came from Scott Menzel on X, who said this, Civil War is destined to be the most divisive film of the year. I won't say that it isn't well acted or directed, but this is definitely a movie that we do not need right now. Lots of problematic elements too, including the ending. S-O-F capital T, soft T, huh? Now I know what some of you may be thinking, why are you reading someone else's reaction in your review? Don't you make film criticism is dead videos for stuff like that? And yes, I do. But I'm going to bring it up here because I think it's relevant as it pertains to how some people might take this film the wrong way. Because to me, the minute someone calls something problematic, all they're really saying is that thing doesn't line up with their way of thinking. And I would respond to that and say that not every movie should. Regardless of what you think of modern entertainment, films are not always made by artists to reflect a one-sided ideology or appeal to that ideology. A good film, if you allow it to, can oftentimes make you question your own ideology. And I think that Civil War may do just that for a lot of people. Now that's not to say that I found the film to be heavy-handed or preachy like a lot of other modern films. I just found it to be powerful in some aspects, and I think that's going to make some people uncomfortable while watching it. You're pathetically predictable. Especially people who have a hard time looking at things from different perspectives. I'm going to be very clear when I say this movie is not for everyone. Not everyone is going to get it. Not everyone is going to be willing to open themselves up and consume it for what it is. In typical Alex Garland fashion, this movie is not really what you think it is. What if I told you there were several moments throughout this film that were dedicated to explaining the intricacies of wartime journalism and photography? I didn't personally expect that walking in, but in a lot of ways, it was refreshing to see. And while some may find it boring, I felt that it did add something to the film. It's a plot point used to introduce us to two characters, a veteran wartime photographer, played by Kirsten Dunst, and a rookie played by Kaylee Spang. Wow, great reflexes. It's one of the most interesting dynamics in the film to see how these two characters, who are very different, and in very different points in their life, bond with each other. And how they handle themselves differently in difficult situations. Or how they grow in different ways as characters throughout the film. With all the madness going on around them and taking into consideration the world that Alex Garland built, there are still interesting characters at the core of this film that hold it all together. That's not to say that certain scenes in the film, especially early on, 
didn't come off as a bit weird or even a bit too pretentious. And it's very safe to say that this film can be considered a slow burn because it does take its time early on to establish the characters and the world properly. The beauty of this movie is that essentially it's a road trip film, as we follow a group of people deeper and deeper into a dangerous territory, all with the purpose of capturing the only story that is left to capture in a world like this. If fool me, we can't get fooled again. In a lot of ways, this film is a boiling pot ready to overflow at any minute. There are more than a few scenes in this film that will probably make people feel uncomfortable. And they should be made to feel uncomfortable because this is an uncomfortable subject. Alex Garland wouldn't be doing his job if you didn't feel uncomfortable while watching it. The truth is, is that it's very unsettling seeing your homeland being used as a battleground. It's a warning sign of what could potentially happen to any country if unrest is left unchecked and people start to act on it. Granted, it's an exaggerated example but it's still thought-provoking nonetheless. The film is incredibly tense at moments. There's something to be said about how the characters, and the audience for that matter, are made to feel when you don't really know what's around the next corner. Ah, we're gonna die! There's one scene in particular that features Jesse Plemons that you see in the advertisements for the film. And it's easily one of the more intense scenes that I've seen in a film in a long time. And the scene really gives you a sense of how far society has fallen at this point, and how people have been fighting for so long that they almost don't even know what they're actually fighting for anymore. And as far as the finale goes, you can guess the setting and you can guess the situation based on the synopsis. Now this finale may hit a little bit too close to home for some people, and I get it. It's one of the biggest reasons why some people are calling it problematic, even though I don't agree with that. But when it comes right down to it, this whole sequence very much plays out like a tragedy to me. The ultimate symbol of a country and its people completely falling apart. And it's one hell of a shot war sequence on top of that. It really makes you think and it makes you put yourself in that situation and think what would you do? I'm in a glass case of emotion! Now I'm not going to sit here and say that I liked everything about this film or that everything about it worked for me because that would be a lie. I think some of the ideas presented didn't quite land with me and I did think that the pacing early in the film was a bit odd at times. But to me when you look at Civil War in its totality, it's quality filmmaking through and through. Are some of the messages contained within it a bit too transparent and obvious at times? Yes. But in a weird sort of way for a film like this, I actually think that works. Because to me the concept alone calls for a more blunt approach. This is not a subject that you can approach with a ton of nuance. And Alex Garland, I think, had the foresight to understand that and crafted the film in a way where it's still asking some difficult questions. I totally understand someone not being able to connect with this film to an extent, but I do think that Alex Garland approached this heavy subject matter in an interesting and unique way. And even if it's a bit weird and strange at times, I think it's still worthy of being praised. And that's why I'm going to give Civil War the pleased Palpatine. Good. Good. Y'all be cool. Right on.